Hi, my name is Andy Borak, and I'm the Assistant Director for Outdoor Programs at Radford University. Um, I'm at home and I'm in quarantine, uh, but because we're at home doesn't mean that we have to sit idle. Uh, we're gonna take this opportunity to learn and to continue to educate ourselves. Uh, and today I'm gonna show you how to build a climbing anchor using static rope. Now, before we get started with this educational experience, let me say that climbing is inherently dangerous. You need to know how to do these things. You need to know your equipment to know how to use this equipment. In order to do that, you can go on a RU Outdoors trip. You can reach out and find a guide service uh, that is affiliated with the AMGA or the PCIA. Uh, but this tutorial is for educational purposes only and that you need to gain the proper knowledge and experience before you go out and try this on your own. So before we get into the specifics of building the anchor, let's talk about the equipment that you need. Now, aside from your PPE, like your helmet and your harness, this is the equipment that you're going to need to safely build this anchor. First, you're going to need a dynamic rope. This is the rope that you will attach to the master point and ultimately you'll be using to climb the route with. Next, you're going to need static rope. I typically carry about 100 to 150 feet of this static rope. You'll also need two locking carabiners. I use a smaller style pear-shaped carabiner. And lastly, you need some type of belay rappel device to attach yourself to the tether, which will allow you to safely negotiate the edge of the cliff. I use a Petzl Grigri. Now, let's get to building that anchor. All right, so before we get started, we have to realize that we have to use our imagination here. Obviously, we're not at a crag. This stick on the ground in front of us, that is what we're gonna to use to identify our cliff's edge. On the top here, we're gonna assume it is smooth and flat. Uh, and then there's a vertical drop on the other side of that stick closer to the camera, uh, which is going to be the climbing face. Uh, so now that we've got that underway and we're in our imagination mindset, uh, let's go ahead and get to the anchor building specifics. So when we're selecting a tree to build an anchor on, there's a couple things that we need to consider. First, the tree needs to be alive. So we need to take a good look all the way to the top, down at the bottom, make sure there's foliage, um, it's well barked, the root system you know, isn't protruding out of the ground, um, it needs to be alive. Secondly, we need to think about the size of the tree. All right, so we're talking about mass. Basically what I look for is a tree that has a, a trunk diameter of about 10 to 12 inches. Next, I'm looking at the base of the tree. I'm looking to see if the ground is super compact. When you're dealing with a, a heavy, heavily climbed area, a lot of the times you'll be up at the top and there'll be a lot of compact dirt around the base of the tree. Um, it may seem trivial, but actually what that does is it suffocates the root system of the tree and it compromises the integrity or the strength of that tree. Next, what we're going to look for is the bark around the base of the tree. Uh, when you're building an anchor, typically you're going to be using the base of the tree. Um, and as far as leave no trace is concerned, um, we want to leave as little impact as possible. So if the tree has a lot of rope rub and the bark is starting to come off, either A, find a different tree, or B, think about patting that tree with a jacket or a sweater or something of that nature so that we're not going to jeopardize the health and safety of that tree. All right, so now that we've determined what we need to look for as far as a tree to build an anchor, um, let's talk about um, anchor leg spacing and the angle of your anchor. Now, I'm going to use these two trees to build my anchor. Um, notice that they're spaced out and they're not stacked right on top of each other, but they're not super, super far apart. So the rule on anchors uh, is typically that if you're building an anchor with a static line, you're going to have two anchor legs. So there will be Part of there will be attached to this tree and part of there will be attached to that tree and it will run out to the master point which is where you'll be climbing. Now if your anchor legs are too close together you lose stability in your anchor. So if you can imagine um, that my hips are the master point of your anchor, each one of my legs is one of the anchor legs and each foot is the anchor point or the tree. Um, if my climber is moving side to side, right, my anchor doesn't have a lot of stability. So if my climber moves too far to the left or too far to the right, my anchor master point is going to roll. Now if I space out those two anchor legs a little bit and I apply that same scenario, right, 
my weight transitions and shifts so that load or force shifts from anchor to anchor and it's a lot more stable. So you need to look for trees that are spaced out um, and not right on top of each other. Now another thing that you need to be cognizant of um, is the force that is applied to each anchor leg. Um, and, and typically what you're going to find in the top rope situation is that when you have two anchor legs and they're moving from two anchor points down, they're going to meet the master point. Now the angle at your master point should be less than 90 degrees. If it goes above 90 degrees, the forces on each one of those legs starts getting uh, multiplied. Um, and that angle should be greater than 15 degrees, right? So if the angle is less than 90 and greater than 15, right? We're going to keep the stability of the anchor and we're going to keep the force on each one of those anchor legs in check. All right, so let's build this anchor. We've determined where our two trees are. We know where our cliff's edge is. Um, it's time to get to it. A couple things to keep in mind. When I build an anchor, um, I work from the back to the front. So I spend as little time up next to that cliff's edge as, as possible. Um, it's just a way for me to manage my own risk. Um, something else to keep in mind is that when you're up on top of a cliff and you're, and you're working, um, you should keep at minimum a body's length away from the edge. Um, I like to keep about 10 feet. So let's get going. Um, so the first thing you need to do is uncoil your rope. Now it's pretty important to do this in a neat and orderly fashion so that um, it doesn't get all tangled. It makes working a lot, a lot easier. Um, and, and it just looks more professional and, and more elegant and clean. Uh, the next thing you're gonna do is take that, that bit of rope that you just uncoiled um, and we're going to create our tether line. Um, so I find the end of the rope and I tie a barrel knot in the end. And I make sure it gets nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull out a couple arm spans. I'm going to estimate how far it is to the edge of the cliff there. And I'm going to throw the rope while I'm holding on with my other hand. And I want that knot to go over the edge of the cliff by about three to four feet. I'm going to work my way back to my anchor point and I'm going to tie a bowline on a bite close down to the base of the tree so that we're not creating unnecessary leverage on that tree. bowling on a bite, we're always going to tie an overhand to back it up. Alright, so now we have our tether line going out to the cliff's edge. We have the rest of our static line here. I'm going to pull out some more static line. I'm going to estimate oops, that's about right here. I'm going to estimate how much rope I think I'm going to need to go out to the cliff's edge and then back to my other anchor point. So I'm going to throw it out there. I'm just going to throw out a bite. And then I'm going to take the remainder of this rope and I'm going to go back up to my other anchor point. And I'm going to tie a second bowline on a bite, again, nice and low around this tree. Again, always back with your bowlines. Uh, with an overhand, uh, if you're running really short on rope, you just can do it with a carabine. Okay. You're gonna take the rest of that stack of rope, okay. and you're gonna put it right next to that bowline. Keep it nice and tight, clean and organized. The next thing you're gonna do, gonna take your rope, the climbing rope, Untie it. Again, keeping it clean and organized. Okay. Right down. Okay. Tie a barrel knot. I always tie a barrel knot in the bottom of my climbing rope uh, when I'm throwing it over because if I end up rappelling, 
I like to have that safety nut there. Um, high clove hitch, grab a, a carabiner, and just kind of connect it to the back of your harness so that you can drag it out to the cliff edge with you. Next thing you're going to find your tether line. Grab your grigri, connect your grigri to the tether line, and back to your blade loop. Give the rope a good tug. Make sure your grigri is oriented and cammed correctly. All right. And then go ahead and lower yourself down to the cliff edge. When you get to a spot where you're comfortable, um, it can be over the cliff edge if you need it to be, um, depending on what the con looks like, or you can be right at the top. Give yourself a little bit of play in that tag line. Um, and then if, you're, if your tail is too long uh, on, your, on your tether, you can put an overhand on a bite in that line so that if you slip a little bit, you're only going a couple inches rather than a couple feet. Now once you're down here at the edge, you're going to look down and you're going to find where you think the top of that climb is going to be. Once you find that, you're going to pull both legs of the anchor tight, and then you're going to tie a BHK. So what a BHK is like it is, if you look at this rope, I threw down a biter rope, and then I'm grabbing both strands uh, below that bite. I'm keeping it tight as I'm doing this, and I'm going to fold it in half again. So essentially, it's a bite on a bite. Once I've done that, I'm going to tie either an overhand or a figure eight. Um, either one works. Um, figure eight will take up a little bit more rope um, if you threw out too much to begin with. You're going to tie it, you're going to make it nice and tight, and you're going to have this third loop here. There's a couple options for this third loop. You can clip it right in to these loops, so you have three points here. Um, if it's small, you can fold it over top, and you can also tie it uh, with a barrel knot back onto the anchor legs. So mine works just fine if, I clip, if I'm clipping it into these two. So then you're going to take your two locking carabiners and you're going to clip them in to these um, to this master point opposite and opposed um, there are situations where that may not be opposite and opposed um, but we try to do that whenever it, it makes the most sense all right so now if we look at this we have our two anchor points coming down to our master point the knot is sitting right on the cliff's edge um, and what that is doing is creating more surface area right um, on that rope so there's maximum rope, it, rope surface area where it's going to be rubbing. Um, so that knot should be sitting right on top of that clip's edge. Okay. The next thing we're going to do unclip our climbing rope. We're going to clip it into the two carabiners. Tighten them down, all right? Every time we put a carabiner on to something other than a harness, we want it to be locked, all right? And then we're going to pull some of this rope out. And we're gonna pull, 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 all right? Until we think we have enough. And then we're just gonna go ahead and toss it down. We don't want the rope to go all the way down to the ground. We just want enough to pull the line tight and then we're gonna pull the rest of this out and have it lower. Um, it's much preferred to lower a rope than it is to throw a rope. So if you can, lower the rope rather than throw it. So I'm gonna slide this rope down. Once I see that that knot is on the ground, or if my climber at the bottom says, hey, rope's on the ground, perfect. Um, what I do is I take my knee and I lay it on top of the rope here and I take my other end of the climbing rope and I pull it. Again, I chuck it down a little bit, and then as I need to, I just feed the rest of this rope out. And of course, all this rope that's sitting in front of me here, all this climbing rope here that's sitting in front of me, will be going down to the bottom of the cliff and not just staying up right there. Once I get to the end, I stop, I tie my second barrel knot, and then I let it go, all right? And at that point, the weight of the rope will pull this tight, 
And what I want to look for is to make sure that my carabiners are oriented correctly and they aren't sideways or crooked. And they're both still locked. I'm gonna make sure it's looking right exactly how I want it to be. I'm gonna stand up and I'm work my way back to the edge. Now this is a top rope setup where I don't need to repel. Uh, we may go into that in another session, but right now we're just going to assume that I can down climb or scramble another class three terrain or something to get back down to the base of the climb. And that's all there is to it. Put my Grigri here. Back on my harness. Pull my tether. Keep it nice and tidy again, right up here by my nap. And I can go down and uh, me and my partner can start climbing. So really quick, let's go over what these knots are. So the first knot that I tied was a barrel knot and I put that on the end of my tether. So how I tie that, so if I have the end of my rope here, I pull the rope through and I leave about 12 inches or so on the tail of that rope. And I fold two fingers down. So it kind of looks like my, my, my rope is going through two fingers and then there's two fingers out. I'm gonna wrap it around those two fingers and back towards my knuckles, right? And then I'm gonna take that end, I'm gonna push through the hole that I just pulled my two fingers out. When you're done with the knot, there should be two parallel strands on one side, and on the other side, there should be an X. That's the barrel knot. All right, so the next knot we tied was a bowline on a bite. So the first thing you need to do in order to tie this knot is create a bite, so that's a rope that is kind of folded in half like this where there's two independent strands going away. You take that bite and you pass it around the object that you want to tie it around. You're going to pull one strand so that you have a decent amount of rope, two strands on either side of the tree. The strand that is not on the bite, so you see the bite here, the strand that is not on the bite, which is what we call the load strand, is where we're going to tie our loop. So we're gonna take this rope and we're gonna fold it to make a loop like this. And then we're gonna take those other strands and pass them up through the loop, right? So what we're doing is we're creating a slip knot. Now, through that loop that you just created, you're gonna take that bite, you're gonna pass it through, and then you're gonna take the two load strands and you're gonna pull. And as you pull, you're gonna flip that knot. So it's gonna end up looking like this. And of course you want to dress it up and make it look good. Now what I was saying earlier is that every time you tie a bowline, you want to back it up. So I back it up with an overhand. So you're going to take it, the tail end with the, the bite, and you're going to wrap it around the loop that's going around the tree. And you're just going to put an overhand on it. Now the BHK, again, is, is fairly simple. It's First thing you have to do is pull both strands of your anchor tight. Okay. You have a bite of rope. You're gonna pull those strands tight and you're gonna put a bite onto a bite. Okay. So there's two strands and two strands. And once that is done, you're just gonna take those two strands here and you're gonna wrap them around to create an overhand. You can do one more time to make a figure eight if you want to. All right. So you have these two ears here on the master point and then you have a loop here and again this loop can be clipped into the ears it can be passed around or if you have enough rope you can just tie an overhand around one of the strands okay carabiners opposite and opposed on the master point they can go through all three of these loops so you're going to put them on You're gonna put it on. So when you have two carabiners opposite and opposed, the gates are gonna be facing opposite directions when the carabiners are oriented the same way. And when the gates open, they're going to create an X. Okay? And that's all there is to it. Master point, carabiners opposite and opposed. To create the clove hitch, you take your rope and you make one loop. And then you create a second loop to the right in the same orientation. Okay. And then 
the loop in your right hand gets passed behind the loop in your left loop in your left hand. And then when you put a carabiner through both those loops now, and you pull tight, you have a clove hitch. Well, that's all there is to it. Uh, building an anchor at a static line up on top of a cliff face um, is pretty easy. Um, what becomes difficult uh, is when you don't have trees in the perfect spot where you want them to be, when you're negotiating briar patches, when you're cold, tired, hungry, wet at the end of the day. Uh, so there's a lot of variables that come into play. Um, this is a scenario where we had two perfect anchor points. Uh, we had the exact equipment that we needed. Um, there's always gonna be something that, that jumps out and, and changes things and, and makes it more difficult for you. So practice, practice, practice. Um, again, seek out that qualified instruction. Um, if you're a Radford University student, come find me on campus. Um, if you're not, go find an AMGA guide, a PCIA guide, um, and have them teach you these skills because again it you know it might seem easy when you're watching someone else do it but in the heat of the moment when you're out there doing it it is it, or it can be it can be difficult so again thanks for watching